Hey, welcome back. I am talking with my friend Joe Asbridge. We had a conversation earlier in one of my series, Friends of Forrest Fisk, and I guess this is sort of a continuation on that. Um, in truth, it was more I wanted to talk with a friend about spiritual things, and I held on to it. In fact, this um, recording was done in September of 2022, and we're just starting out 2024 uh, right now. I held on to it for a while because I was a little bit afraid of the mm, public ramifications of sharing with other people my thoughts and beliefs um, in a public forum. But I have uh, since come to really believe some of the things that I think, um, regardless of the consequences. And, uh, and uh, in order to move on and grow, I'm going to be sharing those things here, at least at least couched in some of the ways that I was more comfortable with uh, a little over a year ago. So I hope that you enjoy this conversation. I actually have another one that we just recorded at the very beginning, the first day of January 2024. That'll come up in another video. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching or listening, and I hope that you get something good out of it. I may turn this into something else and polish up the edges. So thanks so much. Well, Joe, uh, I'm doing fine. I just wanted to talk with a friend. It's been a while since we've talked, and I always enjoy our conversations. And yeah. so I thought I should give you a call. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I was just going to say, I don't have a lot of friends who are like spiritually so inclined. I've been really working a lot in exploring new ways of beliefs. Hmm. Definitely outside of traditional uh, uh, evangelicalism. Mm. Um, but I still think that like there's a common metaphor that's always going on in my head like Shakespeare said what if if it rose by any other name wouldn't it smell just as sweet mm -hmm. and there's so much to that when it comes to anything just like Jesus said the fruit of the spirit you'll be able to recognize who they are or what they are based on what they produce mm. so I've been really like <sighs> just taking those two elements, those similar things, like what if the names were changed, but the properties were the same? Mm. What would God be if the God of the Bible were reframed to be villainous or, and the name was Yahweh or Yeshua or whatever, mm. or what would on the other hand be is if you had a very divine being of some sort mm -hmm. doesn't matter what the name is but it was good it was loving it was all encompassing of love it was uh the most creative being there was mm -hmm. so regardless of the name and it was good um would you entrust yourself to it mm. So, I mean, that, I mean, in a lot of ways that would creep out all my friends and family. Cause I'm like, um, cause you know, I'm not, I'm not saying it's not the God of the Bible. I'm, I'm just saying, um, it's, it's a spirituality that is not necessarily rooted in everything that's said in the Bible, but brings out some other sources that, um, that are just different, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm not out here worshiping trees or anything weird like that. Um, although trees are very cool. Trees are nice. We yeah. got trees in our backgrounds. Yeah. My name is Forrest. I dig the trees. <laughs> but, like, I've just been really imagining life differently had not the scriptures been self-looping authoritative if that makes sense self-looping authoritative like the scriptures say that they're authoritative so therefore they are authoritative mm. yeah. or people who are influenced by scripture i.e christians say that scripture is the only way by which that we can know who god is mm -hmm. and i'm starting to question that mm. and um I think I definitely would rather have proof and a way that's scientific than just like, I have a feeling, therefore I know. 
because really <laughs> imagine you know some higher being could manipulate your feelings or well where does that get you then you know like so that's not good however like i think that the training i've received in the church is you know the evil that exists in the spiritual realm now i've also been told the devil can't read your mind but i'm just like who who says that like <laughs> or evil spirits can i'm like who's to say that like we're not just throwing out all this stuff giving mm -hmm. it away through our mental energies or whatever they don't have to read our mind it's just like it's kind of evident or whatever like google knows so much about us already like just on what we search and do and all this stuff i I think we've been taught um, evil spiritual beings um, are not methodic. They're, they try to get your attention and make you do things now. But the spirit of God is slow and consistent mm -hmm. and peaceful. So okay. that's what you, that was your training in the church that you learned? Is what yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So like if you're trying to suss out what the spirit is in your life, you know, go with the methodic, go with the consistent, go with the slow, go with the good, go with the peaceful, as well as reading the fruit of the spirit. Like if you hear a voice that says, kill your wife, <laughs> you yeah. know, like, yeah. like, okay, like, okay, Abraham had that voice. He questioned a lot, I'm sure, like with his son, you know, but that doesn't happen much. And we've also been told, like, if you're a Christian and you feel like you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit or God say, go out and murder, like, in some ways, people say, yeah, you got to do it. And I'm like, hold on, we, <laughs> we have to have some standards. So like, there's some sort of a balance between, like, being sure, absolutely sure that you hear the voice of God and doing it, even if it's crazy. And you got to also test the spirits, <laughs> make sure that you know who you're talking to, making sure that what you're listening to is God. And there has to be some sort of evidence that the God that you're hearing and feeling is the God that you want, the good the good, mm -hmm. the loving, the peace with all the fruit of the spirit stuff. And and not a lot of that came out of my mouth made like a lot of sense, but. No, it makes, that makes a hundred percent sense to me. Oh, I'm so glad because I feel like I'm just rambling, but. No, it makes a hundred percent sense. Like, I mean, I get the, I understand what you're saying that you're not like, um, you're not reading a pre-prepared text that has it articulated just so, but I know what you're saying. You know what I mean? I mean, it would be great if I could flesh all this out because it's very important to me because I feel like the God that the typical evangelical has created mm -hmm. is super suspect and not good. Um, I'll let you keep thinking on that thought, but also like, I've already, I, think, yeah. I think there is a lot of good that is extra biblical, like, mm -hmm. man, like when I see people like meditating and like being at one with the spirit and, and, and they're not Christian, like I see value in, in, in the way that they project themselves and are, and the same in a lot of our raised in the church homosexuals that just like don't feel comfortable like in their own skin and yet they want to be, but they're good people mm -hmm. and we've vilified them. And I'm like, I don't know, you guys, they're exemplifying all the fruit of the spirit. And the only thing that you think is wrong with them is this label of homosexuality. And honestly, like... Mm -hmm you're condemning them even when they haven't like held hands with the same sex like can we not read the signs people the signs that these are good and godly people um just based on the fruit you know mm -hmm. so i've been experimenting with like 
this idea in spiritualism mm -hmm. that it's definitely against what typical things have been taught in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid to say it out loud, but we might have already, I don't know, that um, we are not only in, built, made in the image of God, like, oh, you have intelligence. Therefore, you look like an intelligent being who created stuff. Congratulations. But we are not in any way a part of the divine head at all. This is the typical message. You know, like, we call it the image of God, the Imago Dei. And we're like, yay, we're smarter than other animals so we are cool but no i the spiritualism side the the people that like meditate and um have done trippy acid and mushrooms and all this other stuff they're like consistently mm -hmm. uniformly peacefully and um uh, like in good ways saying what frightens me is we are actually some small part of actual god mm -hmm. not that we are god i mean if we were god we could be like all oh, sickness is removed in all of the world and it would just be like it'd be over we'd be like oh we're gods oh what is this strange thing called matter i don't know and then disappear or whatever but we're not we're like what the message in the spiritualism sort of woo-woo thing is like we're a part of god we are god in flesh experiencing life in a purposefully limited purposefully um ignorant way kind of like when you play D, &D mm -hmm. and you've created a character and they have no idea who is playing the game mm. kind of like that yeah mm -hmm. um but if you chose to let your character know what's up i guess your character could know what's up but then you'd be Some like, like meta thing like in the yeah game. yeah exactly i mean that would be kind of a weird way to play um but it, it just feels like what i have been told is this seems good this philosophy seems really peaceful to me and really good and i really dig it mm -hmm. hmm. yeah i mean like i would say that's pretty much where i'm at <laughs> like you kind of summed up kind of what i think um, <laughs> Yeah, I like definitely took a detour through um, more like a nihilistic <laughs> view for a while, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. Like more recently, I've started to be suspect, suspecting what you're saying is true. Um, because, well, like watching a lot of like near death experience videos. Um, yeah. Like I watched a lot of them on youtube but i what i've been really interested in is how um like christianity does and doesn't conflict i think is what a little bit of what you're getting at christianity does and doesn't conflict with the kind of like mysticism or like sp spirituality that you're talking about um yeah i mean there are different branches that value different sides yeah and each branch has their own words for things so like when we say we are a part of god um the eastern orthodox church labels panentheism now pantheism is everything is a god the tree is a god the rock is a god the whatever anything is 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 a, is a part of god panentheism is we are all in god like everything that is made is made from god therefore it's all a part of God's purview and kingdom, and we're we're all in God. And it's it's sort of like, uh, hey, we've made a name for things that 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 says this is okay. But in a lot of ways, they're so overlapping; it's kind of hard to to suss out the difference. But like, apparently, it's orthodox to say 
in some circles, panentheism, because we are all in God. But um, the distinctions are pretty thin, I think. Yeah, I mean, I started to think um, that there's kind of different levels to consciousness. Yeah. Um, but like <clears throat> the highest level is like um, reunion and that there are, are lower levels than this, but not many. <laughs> um, but the but this level is more interesting. Hmm. So we're on a little adventure, little detour, you know, because like you mentioned, we were bored or something. And so we decided to come, decided to come here. But it's interesting because like I went on a backpacking trip with Brendan Blowers. And yeah, I like that guy. He's cool. Yeah. And That's, I'm Nathaniel jealous Lyons. of him now. Yeah, yeah. I went with Nathaniel and Nathaniel Lyons and Brendan Blowers and um, Isaac. Ugh. Anyway, but Brendan came on this one. And I was talking to Brendan about um, what I think because like Camden asked me what I think uh, about a year ago on another trip with Nathaniel. Um, and I said, you know, I think that Christianity is pointed to something real. I just can't get with the culture. And I still think that, and I was telling Brendan that like, you know, um, I think um, that, you know, like Jesus in the Bible, he probably had a near death experience it talks about when he was tempted in the desert. That's my theory is he had a near death experience at that point. Paul definitely had a near death experience. He says so in his, uh, in Galatia or, uh, not the road to Emmaus. Is well, the road to Emmaus story is written. It isn't written by Paul. Um, it's written by whoever wrote Luke, but, um, no, he says that he had a near-death experience. He doesn't call it a near-death experience, but he says, I was caught up in the third heaven in Galatians, and I was permitted to see things that I can't speak of. Um, and basically, in Judaism, the third heaven is where you, like, is where, like, um, like Moses hangs out and, like, the prophets. And then he says that, like, to prevent him from being prideful, God put a thorn in his side, says that Jesus appeared to him in the same way that Jesus appeared to everyone else, which I think is really interesting. The implication is that he appeared to him in the same way that he appeared to everyone else. In other words, the, the implication is a little confusing, right? I mean, like, is Paul just like sitting in his living room and Jesus like materialized out of nowhere but paul's not saying that he had a vision you know um so the implication would be like kind of like this road to emmaus story like paul had a vision but it was real you know what i mean mm -hmm. like that it felt real that it looked real that it was like like a near-death experience that's what everybody says about near-death experiences is that it was real it wasn't some people say it was more real than this real. Yeah, exactly. Like he says that he, Jesus appeared to 500 people in Galatians, last of all to me or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, more people have had near-death experiences where they encountered Jesus in the modern times by multiple factors of 500. Like, Mm -hmm. thousands of people probably have had near-death experiences where they've seen jesus at this point yeah um so i mean what does that imply like jesus is real like he's a real being that he is a a real person and when i've read about near-death experiences where people find jesus like meet jesus and stuff he is loving. I mean, they always like, sometimes they say things like, well, he didn't announce that his name was Jesus, but he never does, right? Like he never says, I am Jesus. My name is Jesus. And like, maybe sometimes that's happened, but I've never heard about it. Um, he usually appears as like a shepherd or just this like loving kind of like ultra ascended Dionysus type 
figure, you know, in, in people's near death experiences. I read about one where a guy went to the other side and it was like, it was a very like nice experience where it was very heavenly and like, it was kind of like a big vacation and like nonstop, like fun times. <laughs> but at the end of it, Jesus appeared and said, it's not your time yet. Go tell everybody that death isn't real. He was there for like months, you know, like what seemed like months, but he was actually only dead for you know, however long. We're able to like in the in the afterlife or the, the beyond they were able to like have perspective on this life um, by like either doing life review or like, um, yeah, like he had he, he said he saw one woman watching um, like a movie of actual old west like cowboy and Indian battle in this like afterlife like she was she was just like it was in this little theater room like watching like cowboy and Indian battle and he, he said that he went to a castle and like there was a woman who was like in charge of this castle and she was like a historian of medieval um medieval historical figures and so like in the castle there was information about all these old kings that have lived throughout history <laughs> he said that like there was like beaches and, I don't know. but like everybody's near-death experience is a, little, is a little bit different so i take them all with a grain of salt and i think a lot of them are really metaphorical this one didn't seem very metaphorical though it seemed very like comprehensible anyway sorry i'm just i'm rambling but anyway i do think that jesus is a real person yeah that's what i've come to, to come to think at this point whether he's like part of the essential like light divine that manifests itself as jesus but like in that regard like i am part of that that manifests itself as joe and you are that part of that that manifests itself as forest jesus is just like the most ascended part like the most aware um, yeah that's that's one little hang up that like i struggle with like why would there be portions of scripture that say that jesus was god's the father's one and only son like they had to put the word only in there like why and like and what would cause them to write that mm -hmm. if this other truth that seems like truth anyway um is paul doesn't think so paul doesn't think that what jesus is god's only begotten son yeah he doesn't no um he thinks that he was the firstborn he says so Let's see if i can find it well, I mean, John is pretty significantly saying that. Um, right. They're Jesus. different. They disagree. Well, so like Ephesians isn't really written by Paul, but in Galatians, which is by Paul, he says in Galatians 4, 4, he says, God sent his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those under the law so that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So you're no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. In other words, Jesus is the firstborn. Now, like in Ephesians, he says something about Jesus being the firstborn over all creation and stuff, but he's trying to copy Paul. Galatians, actually written by Paul, he's implying something a little bit different, which is that Jesus is like, God sent Jesus, his son, to show us the way to become sons as well, I guess. I don't know. It's a little hard to parse through what Paul is saying. But yeah. Now, John... John, the Johannean section would imply something totally different. I would agree with you on that. Like that author thinks that Jesus is God, essentially, like they're the same, no difference, and that Jesus is therefore 
above and beyond. Yeah. 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 So if, I mean, that's one little hang up I have, like what compelled the author of John to equate God so like Jesus so much with the one and only begotten, not made sort of language that we end up from with uh, the, the creeds from, you know? Yeah. And I totally understand also like recently, um, I think his name is Joe, but some guy on TikTok, the Mormon. Yeah, the Mormon. Are you talking about Dan McClellan? Dan McClellan, yeah. Yeah. Um, he mentioned something that um, it's called univocality of scripture. He says that we really need to be careful of the univocality of scripture, imagining that the Old and New Testaments all go, come together in one conglomeration in in one unified story mm -hmm. because really they're not i mean there's scripture that contradicts scripture and even in the same book <laughs> and stuff so he he basically says we we really need to be careful of saying that this book says something piece it together with this book to make a bipolar um, view of one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm beginning to, to see that that might be very true with a lot of things that we've conglomerated together to come to our beliefs. Yeah. And I, and I totally agree that we don't have to necessarily believe that the stated authors are the real authors because there's plenty of evidence that says it's not in several books. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, I want to know the truth and, and it doesn't have to be rooted in what the Bible says. I'm not saying that there's no, like, that there's no value in John. It's just, in, what's, what's interesting about it is like <clears throat> that question of like, who is Jesus? If Jesus is indeed a real being that's still around, you know, is he, you know, thinking about it in terms of the near-death experiences that people have, is he the only spirit or the only being that's, like, out there except for, like, a lot of, like, lesser beings, lesser spirits? Um, is he, like, ultra-ascended god of humanity? That's kind of what people describe him as, honestly, like, but then people, but then other people have near-death experiences where they actually become reunited with the light and that and they don't have any sense of like there's one buddhist guy i saw who had a near-death experience where he was he was not connected at all like he was still conscious and he was still aware and he still had like thoughts i guess but he was like not connected with any sort of like worldly thing and he had to actually like he decided he wanted to come back for some reason and he had to like, like recreate himself as like a construct, you oh, know? Wow. So like he had to kind of like rebuild his identity and kind of like remember like all this stuff about who he was and like come back. In that sense, like Jesus seems sort of like as presented through like near death experiences, not in the Bible, but also in the Bible too. He seems like somebody who is consciously aware of both realms. Yeah, that he is like, a, like an aspect of the light or maybe um, like an ultra aware aspect of the light or something like that. It's not really clear to me, but that he is like a guide for humanity. Like, you know, when he was alive as a human, he was aware of the spiritual world because he was like he was very aware of being like a manifestation of the divine i guess like yeah kind of, kind i mean of, that seems pretty pretty clear in in how he talks about like you should not call anybody father except for that your father in heaven like he <clears throat> at least must have really believed in that part of it could be his mother's influence i know his mom had some weird experiences too uh -huh. or so the bible says 
But one could imagine a person who has a really deep experience and then has a baby and then tells the child some things, you know, they're going to be influenced. Now, I interrupted you, so go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, no worries. I guess what I mean is is just, just to kind of like wrap it up a little bit that um, I don't disagree that there is a space for a spiritual, like there's a space, there's a path of Christianity that you can take that will lead you to, that will lead you to truth. I don't think it, I think it's pointing at something true. I think, um, you know, uh, that's not to say that other religions aren't, um, but like, it doesn't really matter. I guess some people think it does. I think some people think that Jesus, that like Christianity is like the only true religion. Um, it's the only way that it's going to point you to the right thing. I don't really think that. And I don't think you really have to think that to be a Christian. Um, Depending think, on who defines what being a Christian is. Huh? <laughs> Depending on who you um, assume is defining what being a Christian is, but yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, I know some people think that that defines part, that's part of what defines being a Christian. Like, I think, but I mean, if you look at the creeds and like what Orthodox Christianity is based on, I don't think, I don't think that's in there anywhere. Like if you say you're, um, if you say you're, you know, I believe in God the Father, I don't remember it. But your Nicene Creed, that's not in there anywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, we just had somebody being baptized today. He said, do you agree with all of this? Uh, you know, that Jesus descended into hell and on the third day. And I'm like, well, even and like theologians are less like really it's torn on that last little line right there. Yeah. Yeah, that is a weird one. Like, did he go to hell? Like. It doesn't say it in the Bible. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't recall right now what I've learned about it. Um, all I remember is that there's some debate. But it, also, what is hell as well? The place of the dead um, could be just 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 be the physical realm of bodies. You know, like the ground, which I mean, Sheol or whatever. Um, yeah. And, and then there was some scriptures that even Jesus read um, that we don't typically read. Like, um, I forget what the name of it, but just first and second Maccabees, which oh, yeah. Hebrews read all the time. But that, that is Hanukkah and the whole reason for the, the, the temple of lights or whatever it's called, the tent of lights, the whole celebration of Hanukkah Jesus did. And you would only know about because of reading first and second Maccabees. And a whole bunch of other intertestamental things. Um, there's even a book that we just put down. We're just like, this is too weird for us to like treat as scripture. I forget what it's called. But yeah, just a few things that Jesus was using as resources that we don't. Well, I think the Catholics have Maccabees. Yeah, and you can find it um, even on the Version app. And I've been reading it. I've been using the, the Good News Bible Anglicanized. And it has them listed um, right there before Matthew, Mark. We have, let's see here, it ends with Zephaniah, Haggai, Zachai, uh, Zechariah, Malachi. And then it goes to Tobit, Judith, oh, Greek, Esther, Wisdom, Syriac, Baruch, Letter of Jeremiah, Prayer of Azariah, and the Song of the Three Young Men, Susanna, Bell and the Dragon, First and Second Maccabees, First and Second Esdras, Pair of Manasseh, and then it goes into Matthew, and it's all right wow. there on the, on the U version app. So, wow, yeah, I've been, I've 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 been highlighting stuff, and and I'm sure my friends that follow me on the U version app is like, "What's he doing? <laughs> like, where's that from? Reading Catholic Bibles? Oh no, <laughs> yeah, they're they're really not all that great. They're okay. The books, those books, yeah. I mean, there's. There's a couple of them that I thought were pretty good, but not very many of them. Early Protestants were like, 
<laughs> yeah, like first and second Maccabees. Oh my goodness, that'll put you to sleep. Really? Yeah. Is it just like like boring history? Yeah, it sounds. It feels an awful lot like like where this king fought off this war and reigned for thirty three years, and then yeah. he fought this, and then the battle between he lost thirty three hundred men, except for when he, you know. Yeah. It's it's a lot like that. There's one here. I forget what it was. It was it read like a story. It was pretty good. There's a couple in here. Maybe it was Tobit. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't know who the Maccabees even were up until this year. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know who the Maccabees were. I was surprised. I didn't know the history, but it's cool. Like, makes the New Testament make more sense if you know the story of the Maccabees. I think maybe a mistake to take it out, honestly, even though it's kind of boring, not very spiritual. But right, it's it doesn't seem like it is. It does have the distinction of being true. Like, I don't know if every bit of Maccabees is true, but the the Maccabees did exist, and they were like the kings of Israel for a while, and right yeah like they helped form where the israelites were and who how they became what they were and the land that they had because of the fighting that they did yeah that led up to jesus so yeah it's... yeah yeah i feel like you know, it's just like bible 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 big blank bible 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 and like big blank is like I don't know. Like I said, I think it was a mistake to leave it out by the Protestants, but I get like Protestants are more focused on, I think, I think Protestant Protestantism is more focused on like the spiritual, let's see if this jives with you. It's more focused on spirituality and like the question of like God, like what does God want or what, what does God expect from us than it is about the details of context and all that stuff like do you think that's i think that's a fair statement i'm trying to figure out if i agree with it um well protestantism as i have studied quite a bit about martin luther and the, what he was doing um i mean there's a long tail after martin luther but it was because of the reformation breaking off and the whole in not enlightenment but like like coming to America, forming colonies, finding electricity and finding mechanism all in that whole like industrial era, mm -hmm. that era, that way of thinking about mechanicalized ways of doing things mm -hmm. shapes our theology. Mm -hmm. It shaped our theology in if A plus B equals C, then, you know, if blah 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 then this and i it, it shaped our theology i think we uh, evangelicals especially build up their faith on the inerrancy of scripture to their detriment um because that way of thinking it wasn't how they wrote the bible um so this modern way of doing things you know devoid of the spirit is is why we went postmodern. I mean, we like communism was um a weird mix of modernism where like, oh, we need people to have houses, let's build 500 houses straight up in block cubes and it's soulless lifeless concrete building. I mean, that's modernism. Um and it took the soul out of like living. And so we rebelled in that way of thinking with postmodernism where you have cubism uh, like from picasso and just like uh what's his name that like splatter painted and all this other yeah. stuff so like jackson pollock yeah exactly yeah. so like postmodernism was like we're so over this like if you think a b and c then we'll all be okay because we're not okay like this is not a good way to live like mm -hmm. john wesley was all about um like uh, redeem the time and i spent you know 20 hours today working on reading the bible and responding to my my patrons and all this other stuff and i'm just like dude like catch a break like relax it's not yeah. about like how much you can do in a day and john wesley's 
was very much like we've we found mechanism if we just mechanize the way that we think and do life we'll become more close to god mm -hmm. you can tell that we've kind of rebelled against that yeah hmm. that's an interesting point like i guess i hadn't really thought about that i mean i think it's interesting because like i don't think i would be spiritually in the place where i'm at if it wasn't for modern medical technology I mean, that's a weird that's a weird thought like like if it hadn't been for modern medical technology we wouldn't have so many people you know coming back from the dead because that's i mean like jesus came back paul came back he got killed a couple times and came back and they had near-death experiences and came back and started talking about them i hate to be i hate to be a, a bit of a like uh like a book critic about it or something like that you know like paul and jesus were written for Jews, by Jews, living in a certain time and place. And I know that like Jesus wasn't written, but like, you know what I mean? Like his, his words and his ideas were, were written by people who were, actually they were probably Greeks, but they were, he was Jewish and, and his ideas were transcribed by Greeks. And you know, from, I guess, from oral traditions, I guess, this is what, this is what they tell you, Bible college, I think. Um, but it, it very much seems like he's talking in the context of like Judaism mm -hmm. in the first century. And so it's like, what does that have to do with now? You know, same with Paul, like Paul didn't think that, I think Paul thought Jesus was going to come back during his lifetime. Right. And like all the apocalypt apocalypticism that both Jesus and Paul have reflects like near, like it's soon. It's going to be really soon, not 2000 years. Well, it was the end of days for the Jewish people. Not long after Jesus died. I mean, yeah. it was, it was their apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what was it? 80, 70. So what, uh, 37 years after Jesus died. Yeah. And a lot of the Bible is written in the context of that apocalypse too. Like they think Matthew or Mark was written right around the time of the, the Jewish revolt. Matthew was written after it a little bit. Yeah. And it makes sense if you read it in those contexts, it does. Yeah, and I've been wondering how much um, the authors used artistic license. You know, like, okay, you could tell that story, but to like make it a good story, let's add in this, you know, you don't know. Um, yeah, or maybe not to make it a good story, but to make it like, say the thing that they're trying, the message that they're trying to get across. Yeah, but if you think about it, like when we make a movie, even on historical events like mm -hmm. like things are changed to make it a good story mm -hmm. and, or to make it literarily a good thing mm -hmm. even if it was very accurate they're still going to use people that look more attractive <laughs> you know what i mean yeah definitely so like i wonder like how much because the authors were were the book binders and and scribes that were taking these words and making it a publication because mm -hmm. people didn't read and write like we do mm -hmm. that was their job to scribe and write and then put it into a, a publication worthy mm -hmm. of note in some ways yeah all that said i think it's pretty remarkable that but here's here's my like parting thought and then i want to hear your parting thought is that christianity um is weird because it it is both spiritual and and also um a lot of people are spooked out by spiritual stuff so like or they define it in very like mundane ways and 
especially in like uh very like modern like ghosts aren't real kind of like spirituality gets shut and put in smaller and smaller boxes by a lot of christians i feel and reading the bible in the context of near-death experiences and like thinking about it in terms of like how it was how people thought about spirituality when it was written mm -hmm. is pretty i think it actually makes it more alive personally especially if you're not like well everything has to be simultaneously all true at the same time so when john says that jesus is the only begotten son of god and paul says he's the firstborn son of god you don't have to reconcile those two things you say oh paul thought that jesus was the firstborn of god that's interesting what could that mean john thought jesus was the only begotten son of god in what sense was jesus special interesting christians like modern protestants don't don't play that game they don't they don't do that kind of thing they're just like well it's all inerrant Jesus is both the, first, the firstborn and only begotten son at the same time. Don't ask these questions. Shh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and it almost becomes like Jesus isn't even a real like being at that point. He's not even a real person. If you can't make any like authoritative statements about him, that makes sense. How is he in what sense is he a real person? Anyway, that's my that's my parting thought. I want to I want to hear your parting thought. <laughs> I, I don't have any like closing thought. Um, I've gone down several different spiritual rabbit holes on TikTok um, that could come to a, a conclusion. It could come to an overall picture. Yeah. But I'm also skeptical and I'm also um, um, protective of my spirit and where it takes me mm -hmm. to some extent. So I'm like, I don't know. I do kind of know, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> what do you kind of know i just just what feels right and what seems yeah. right and just the whole like recognizing a, a thing for what it is um based on its fruit and just recognizing the goodness that that seems right about certain philosophies mm -hmm. i mean like i really like the idea that we are a part of god and we have unlimited power in some capacities and definitely limited power in others but if we just are content in knowing that we are okay brings a lot of power in itself you know like that we are that we're exactly where we're supposed to be based on some plan that we're not supposed to know about sort of a idea I don't know if that makes sense, but just like there's a part of us that is watching over us and is okay with us and what we're doing provides me a great amount of peace that quells my fears of going down this spiritual rabbit hole, at least for now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, that's not a very, um, not a very like friendly thought to people who want you to give them money or be like volunteering to like help out mm -hmm. at their church or like their mission of what they're trying to accomplish yeah not a very not a very comforting thought because it implies that like maybe they're not here and you're here but like it's more like this and like just by existing and doing your thing you're bringing about you know the kingdom of heaven so to speak right yeah i've thought about that i mean i've thought several times about leaving the church in an official capacity to to just just be the way that god intends me to be however there's a part of me that's like i have all this training yeah. <laughs> like, i went to seminary so what does that mean like if i found the truth would i be the kind of person that would want to share it with others would i want to do a good job of that or do i just want to be and so I haven't come to any conclusions, so. I think America has a long history of like outside spiritual thinkers starting movements that like led people down all sorts of interesting and weird and maybe not even good paths. 
so like i i know this i know what you're talking about like if i know the truth i don't want to like kick anybody down some like weird rabbit hole and like start this whole thing that ends up becoming like mormonism or something you know or like seventh day adventists or whatever you know like i don't know like i told my friend one of my friends about my meditation experience that i told you about yeah and he said you should start a cult he's very <laughs> i was like dude that's not why i'm telling you this he's very um very skeptical of religion but it's like no that's exactly like i, I came to this without being part of a cult or being part of a religion i just did some meditation in one day and this is what i had the experience i had so like would indicate to me like don't start a cult <laughs> right but, yeah but at the same time like i think my my word to you would be like and kind of what i was trying to get at is like you're a pastor or you could be a pastor mm. you have training you might not be able to be like classic nazarene pastor but you do have training you you know and i think that there is a light side and a dark side to the church just like there is everything like mm -hmm. i went to a nazarene youth group which was definitely the light side mm -hmm. of the church and i went to a church of god youth group which church of god is very similar to nazarenes but it was not the light side it was something else you know it was kind of like average the nazarene youth group was had very good vibes you know i think that there is like there's a way to like subtly maybe even subversively point people in the direction of the truth within the framework of christianity within the framework of 21st century american protestantism without going outside of the conventions it's just what do you focus on right right and I've thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I just like I framed it in the beginning. Yeah. 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 Sorry. What were you going to say? No, just like I, I hear you. Like I was thinking if I do come to this as a conclusion, like this is what I think it is, then I would definitely be couching it in those terms. Like Jesus said, by your fruit, you'll know who they are and stuff. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it without even like going outside of orthodoxy where it doesn't really matter. Like the orthodoxy, you could be like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, like historically, textually, whatever, like, eh. or you can just say, well, that doesn't really matter, you know, whether that's like literally true or not. Like, what are we talking about here? And I don't know, I guess like, like I told Camden and and Brendan, I can't get with the culture, but I do kind of like have this part of me that wishes that somebody who can get with the culture would be able to have more of like an honest, like more of a like a loving approach to spirituality and like helping Christian Christians to actually like adopt spirituality in, in like a like a disciplined way so that they're not like deciding all sorts of weird stuff, a way that like really helps people. So I'm not saying like, I'm just trying to encourage you, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Like, okay. I respect, I respect where you're coming from. And, you know, if you, if you were to decide that you wanted to walk away and not be part of the church, throw your hands up in frustration, I would totally understand because that's what I did. But if you can, if you can avoid that, <laughs> you know, you, you have, you could have more influence. You could have more, um, power towards bringing people towards like the light side for yeah. lack of a term yeah i think so too i mean i agree all right i don't know what kind of meeting you got but i'll let you go oh, yeah. yeah sorry sorry chat me up again okay let's yeah. meet again yeah it was good i appreciate it yeah yeah yeah, I felt like I talked a lot, though. I, I want to hear more of what you have to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that I've said everything that I wanted to say. Okay, Forrest, I do got to run. Yeah, I know. Good to talk to you. Thanks, Joe. Bye. Bye-bye.